when we think of selling products or services, we typically develop a marketing plan to create awareness and a system to drive sales. This process could be described as a journey of sorts with the potential customer ending up engaged in an activity we all want, which is buying something from us. And today to talk about this, I welcome a friend and a frequent guest, Ed Marsh, the founder and principal of Concilium Global Business Advisors. Ed, welcome. Thank you, Jeff. I always enjoy our conversations. I look forward to them. Thanks for having me. I do as well. And this one, you know, Ed, seems kind of simple, but maybe it isn't. Maybe there's more to think about this buying journey, but let's get right into it. Uh, tell us about the difference between the sales process and what you have called the buying journey. Yeah, so I think there's a lot of differences. Number one, a huge mindset difference. We tend to think very inwardly. This is this is the way we've structured our company. We've got these people in marketing. We've got these people in sales. When we have a sale, we want to go through these steps in order to try to bring it to you know closed one or whatever the case may be. The problem is that that's our preference. And we're a relatively insignificant player in the transaction because somebody else has to write the PO and provide the money and manage the change and everything else that goes into it. And so the other way to look at it is instead of just our sales process, we can think about the customer's buying journey. The other difference that I would say is that we tend to oversimplify the sales process. If we think internally, I mean, a sales process most companies have sounds something like get an inquiry, collect some technical information, do a quote, and then follow up. And, and, and that's quite simple. But if we understand the buying journey from the perspective of buyers, particularly for something that I call a complex decision, like a five-year cleaning contract or something like that, it's, it's a much more complicated process. They probably have 10 or 15 people or, or at least more than five, depending on the size of the company, involved in that. It's not just like the old days where a simple BANT qualification would get you to the decision maker and confirm the budget and you'd be off to the races. So it's really important that we understand buying journey so that we can overlay an effective sales process on top of it to deal with the way that buyers buy in today's markets. I'm just thinking back to the sales process, the buying process. Remember as a kid, we'd have people come by selling encyclopedias. You're probably not that old, so you don't remember that. I remember that. You're gracious to say so, but I've got very clear recollections. Yeah. So that was selling. That was, they would come and they had a process, but times have changed. Can you talk about that, about the difference from the past to now and what we need to know? Yeah. And, and so there still are jobs like that today. I mean, there are very simple B2C, one call close kinds of jobs. Replacement windows, for instance, uh, is probably a good example. But most B2B sales is much more complex. And so it used to be just this very linear process. Marketing would create a lead, hand it off to sales, and then sales would, you know, sales control the information. So sales had good control over the conversation with the buyer. Today, though, you know, buyers don't rely on Yellow Pages and Thomas Register to try to figure out where to go. I mean, they turn to the internet. And with the internet, they're researching all kinds of things early in the buying journey. They'll bounce around between looking for information that we might normally associate with marketing versus information we might associate with sales and back and forth. And then they'll have a question and they'll go to the chatbot and they don't care whether the person answering the chatbot has, has, you know, is on the sales team or the marketing team. They want somebody answering the chatbot that can answer their question. And, and that is, I think, really illustrative of the way the, the buying journey has changed, which means then that we need to adapt our sales process in order to accommodate the buying journey. So are there any resources that are needed to pull all this together to make this happen? Yeah, I would say a lot. But the first thing that has to happen is people have to adopt a mindset. Companies really have to stop and say, just because we normally had two people in marketing and 20 people in sales, and we just wanted to hand it off leads and somebody would follow up and see if it was qualified and if so, try to sell it. That's not really the appropriate mindset anymore. So we need to understand that we need to respond to buyers. We need to help buyers make a decision. We need to educate buyers. Those are important parts of both marketing and sales. And sales doesn't care who it is that we say is responsible for it. In terms of resources you need to provide, sales enablement content becomes really important. That's something that marketing typically creates, that sales uses at different stages to help move the the uh, sales process along to meet requirements that buyers have for different information at different stages in their buying journey. 
But we also need to understand that leads are different. It used to be a lead was qualified if they had a budget, they had a timeline, we were talking to the decision maker and they had an identified need that we could solve. But now, you know, somebody may well come to a website and download a document that speaks about a very pre-awareness, early stage sort of a concern that they have that in no way indicates that they're ready to buy. On the other hand, we don't want to just ignore them. So we need to be thoughtful about how we engage them, how we provide more information, how we help them without pushing too hard from a sales perspective, but also recognizing the fact that they're not coming to be harassed. They're coming to educate themselves. I mean, those are a couple quick examples of, of resources. I mean, I, I think we've talked about chatbots before. Chatbots are a great example that provide an opportunity for a buyer to reach out wherever they are in their journey. It's up to us. It's incumbent on us to answer in a commensurate way, whether that's with uh, with a bot or with a live person from marketing or a live person from sales or a live person from tech support or customer service or whatever the case may be. Another interesting thing to think about is website navigation. I sometimes tell companies, take the navigation off your site, because if you watch a recording of behaviors on a site, navigation often frust frustrates people more than it helps them. And so if you do a chatbot well, that helps them navigate to whatever they're looking for. It doesn't matter how you think of the structure or where you think a particular page or bit of information ought to be. It's It just helps the buyer get to get to where they need to be. By understanding where they're on the buying journey, then that can help you respond with the right kind of information and, and, and meet them with the right information for where they are in their, in their thinking. And of course, if it's a complex decision and you've got maybe 10 people on a buying team and you've got various colleagues in many cases coming from the same company, but each of them have different priorities and different preferences. And one may wish that this project never goes ahead because they want to use this money for a priority in their department. And others might say, this is the most important thing to help them hit their, hit their goals this year. And so being able to understand where different colleagues from the same company are on your website is great information for, for sales reps as well. And then an, another topic that I see just really increasingly pervasive is risk aversion and buyer uncertainty and buyer hesitance. And so we definitely need materials and tools that help address that concern that buyers have because up to 40% of deals now typically are ending in no decision. And if we understand the complexities of the buying journey, then we realize there's these places where people move from really excited. Oh, this is great. I'm so thrilled to find a solution. This is going to let us solve this problem to, do I really want to take this on? Maybe it's not such a big problem. Maybe I can live with it. And, and that's an important inflection point in the buying journey. And we need to make sure we have materials to help people through that as well. Mm -hmm. So everything you've talked about, Ed, is great information. However, it can be overwhelming. As For a sure. professional in sales and marketing, you got to figure it out. There's effort that has to be put into it. But no buyer wants to go through anything like that. They don't. They want it to be easy. And I know when I purchase products and I'm looking, I don't want to think about it. I just want it to be the easy to see, understand, and then make that decision. Can you close with a thought or two on that? What we can do to make the buyer's journey easy on those who are going to be paying us? I'd say two things. Number one, think of the word friction. Friction and frictionless. That's really, I think, the term of art that most people are using to describe this. Now, secondly, open an incognito browser window. Um, go from a uh, different telephone. Try calling your company. Try navigating to your company and experience what it's actually like to be a buyer. And sometimes that can be a shocking wake up call that makes you realize, geez, you know, we need to do this differently. Even hire somebody, hire, you know, a secret shopper, if you will, to go through the process, trying to become a lead for your company and get information and, and learn from them, from this kind of third party, what the experience was like. Great advice, Ed. Uh, we have to do that, make it easy on them. Tough on us, right? to do the process Absolutely. maybe, but there's tools out there to make it easier. And that's what we have to think about. What can we do to make it easy on us to make it easy on the customer? Appreciate your thoughts today.